Good morning, welcome back to the studio. Today we are going to get back to my first love, which is men's tailoring. I am going to be taking you through the process of constructing a man's frock coat from the 1760s, late 1760s. Uh, it is a little different than uh, 1770s and 1780s in that the skirts are a little bit more fall still. The co collar, uh, collar hasn't been really seen as a fashion uh, item yet, so we're going to put in a, a banded uh, neck edge. And um, the cuffs on the sleeves are a little bit bigger in the late 1760s. But the other items that we're going to go through, the processes, are mostly the same as um, frock coats right through to the end of the 18th century. When you're tailoring, you are going to require all of the things cut out that you will need. Uh, so yesterday I spent the day cutting out all my layers. I cut out the fashion layer, the canvas, the linings, all of the little bits of cloth that we will need uh, so that the process goes much more smoothly in construction. I am Kelly Grant. I am owner of Sweet Chew Historical Clothing, and I make historical clothing for museums and living historians throughout North America. This is one of many videos that happen. Uh, you can check out my YouTube page, maybe hit the subscribe button and the little bell to give you notifications for when I upload a new one. Uh, but I will take you through the process of constructing garments from start to finish so that you understand my process. So here I have the front of the coat cut. I have all of the layers that are over on the side here folded up waiting for me to get to them. But the first thing that we're going to tackle is the pocket. And the pocket wants to line up with the join between a man's belly and his hips. So that crease line where our dads all like to wear their jeans is the fashionable waistline in the 18th century. So we want that, we want that uh, pocket line to be, and I'm going to mark on it in chalk so you can see, this is the fashionable waistline. Here's my pocket flap. It's cut but not finished. And I'm going to just set it on that line to see where I like the pocket to sit. I want it back enough from the front edge to accommodate the buttons and buttonholes, but I don't want to be getting into the pleats too much. I want it fairly close to that back edge though, so that when the man is looking for his pocket, it's right about here. And I do put actual pockets in all of my garments. If there's a pocket meant to be there, there is a pocket there. Um, if it's a decorative pocket flap, there's often a pocket inside underneath where the pocket flap is. There's no point in making a garment without pockets. So I'm, I'm just going to trace out my pocket flap so that you guys can see where it is. And that top seam line is that curved edge so you can see what the pocket's going to look like. And this is all done on the wrong side of the fabric so you'll never be able to see it anyway. But it helps to be able to position the pocket opening inside that pocket flap because you don't want it too large. Uh, you don't want the pocket opening hanging out on either side of the pocket flap. And you also don't want it too high. So I've, I, I like where that's situated and if I needed to I could erase my line with my thumbnail and resituate that line until I was happy with it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the smile for the pocket opening. And I do like making smile pockets versus the cut and slash and fold under triangle opening methods because those slash points are wear points and you could lose your pocket 
and most of the front of the frock, frock coat if you're not careful. But the smile is a good, fashionable invention. And I'm just going to cut, uh, trace my smile out so that it is situated within that pocket flap. And you can see that there. Now, I have both my layers perfectly on top of each other. And I'm going to cut both layers at the same time. And this is super fine, so it's going to hold its edge. I'm not going to need to fold under the edges, so I'm cutting right on the line. If I was using a finer cloth or a more loosely woven cloth, I would leave a, a seam allowance to be able to fold that under. I'm just going to clean up my edges there. This superfine is also so densely woven that it doesn't like to be cut very easily in two layers. Ah, there we have the pocket opening, a big old hole in the front of the coat. But we're gonna fix that. Now I'm going to cut my pocket bags and for part of this coat I'm lying it in cotton sateen that's a good size pocket and I want to bring the pocket bag out past the opening of the pocket and again, I'm going to cut two layers of pocketing at the same time. You could cut one layer of pocketing at a time if you want. Just be sure that you're cutting both pockets the same and that your pocket is bigger than your pocket opening. So you can see how much bigger it is. All right, now I'm gonna set that up for stitching the pocket. Okay, so my coat front is laying flat on the cutting table. It's nice and smooth. I haven't pulled that po pocket opening out at all. Just be careful that you don't stretch out that uh, opening because it is on the bias and it is open and a weak point. What I'm going to do now, you can see the top of my pocket bag here. I'm going to cut that top into a curve. And 
and that curve is going to make it easier to fold down the edge and give it a good press. And I have my coat upside down. Because I'm wanting to work from the wrong side. Okay, so wrong sides together. That edge has been folded under and pressed. I am now going to pin it to the coat front. And it's not perfectly the same curve. And what this is going to do is allow me to ease in that pocketing and create some stability for the bottom of the pocket opening. Now there's some ease there. I'm going to see if I can press it out a bit. I may have to cut that opening a little deeper on the pocketing. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut that opening a little bit deeper. I'm pinning it so that the pocketing is about sixteenth of an inch down from the cut edge of the superfine. That looks better. There we go. And then that pocket bag is just going to hang out open. And what I'm going to do along this bottom edge is fell stitch with some silk thread. Okay, so new project, new sewing needle because Sewing needles do dull and they are cheap and I'm using a number nine quilting needle, which is a nice high needle for me. 
and I am waxing my silk thread. Giving it a good press to set the wax. And I thread the needle and then take the thread off the spool and I nut I knot the cut end. Thread has a nap. And if you thread your needle this way, you'll always ensure that your thread is going in the right direction for your sewing. Okay, so my thread has been waxed and prepped and I'm coming up underneath the lining fabric to hide my knot. And then I'm going to go into the fashion fabric till I can feel the prick on this finger. And picking up the fold of the pocketing. And then going back into the fashion fabric till I can feel the prick. Picking up the fold of the pocketing. Pierre will add a card for the other video on fell stitch in the top corner. And of course, sewing in all sorts of cat hair. And I'm drawing the stitches really tightly so that it eases in that curve and then the pocket doesn't bag open. I'm going to sew right up to that corner of the pocket opening and knot it off. I don't want to sew any further because then I'll be getting in the way of sewing up the sides of the pocket bag. A couple of knots. Bury my knot. Okay, so there's the pocket with the overhangs. I'm going to bring the pocket bag and up. And that pocket line where I'm going to sew the pocket flap, I want the pocket bag to overlap that. And it's going to add a little bit of interfacing to support the opening. 
And you're gonna stick a couple of straight pins in here just to hold it for a second. Just like that. Flip it over. Flatten everything out nicely. And now what I'm going to do is just diagonally baste that pocket bag in place. Being careful not to pick up the ironing board. That diagonal base is going to stay in there for a while. Now I can remove my straight pins so that they're not poking me. And that's secure to continue on. Knotting the thread again with my silk thread, my fine needle. I'm going to pick up all of the layers and starting right at that opening right there, I'm gonna come up under all of those layers with my knot. And then with a spaced back stitch, I'm gonna go along that top edge. And the carrying thread is going behind the pocketing. And I'm stitching through a layer of pocketing and a layer of fashion fabric. And you can hear our disgustingly beautiful day outside. We're getting freezing rain in February, covering everything in a sheet of ice. Now, once I've gotten to the other side of this uh, pocket opening, right at the point, I'm putting my needle in, I'm going to the back side, and I'm going to make my knot on the back side and leave it back there. Once this coat has been lined, you're never going to see the inside of the pocket bag. Okay, so there's the inside of the pocket bag. What I'm going to do now 
is by machine because I can. I'm going to make the sides of my pocket bag, stitch the sides of my pocket bag. And I want to get as close to those side openings of the pocket opening as I can and back stitch little bar tacks at either edge of the pocket bag um, where the pocket opening is. So I'm going to do that by machine and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So I'm going to get right up next to that uh, edge that's the cut edge of the pocket opening. I have folded back the fashion layer to get as close to that edge as possible. I'm not sewing through the fashion fabric at all. I'm just sewing the pocketing. And I'm going to do a bar tack. And there's one half of the pocketing stitched closed. And now coming up from the bottom this time. Holding that pocket opening nice and snug. And there's the other side of the pocket bag stitched up. Okay, so you can see that the pocket bag has been stitched by machine and it's nice and flat and smooth. And the important part is up here where I have made my bar tacks with the sewing machine. And I find that sewing by machine at this step helps to save the client a little bit of money because I can do it so quickly, but it also the pocket bag lasts a lot longer because the machine stitches are so nice and tight. It saves about a half an hour of my time. Okay, so now smoothing it over onto the right side, what I'm going to do now is sew through all of those layers, a little arrowhead tack right at the corner of the pocket bag opening. And the little arrowhead tack going through all of the layers is going to prevent that pocket from tearing. Okay, so I'm going to work an arrowhead tack right here at the corner of the pocket smile. And I'm coming up from the bottom through the pocketing. And when I take my stitches, I'm going through all of the layers. And you can see there's a bit of bulk there. But that's okay. I 
And there's a whole lot of cat hair involved because this cloth is picking up cat hair like nobody's business. straight down through all of the layers for my last stitch and knotted on the back side. And there's the pocket opening. Nicely filled in and a nice big pocket. Pocket comes down to here. Okay, next up we are going to do the pocket flap. But first I'm going to take a wee break. Okay, gang, so I have basted my pocket closed. Can't open the pocket there. And I've also run a basting stitch along the bottom edge of the pocket bag to hold everything in place so it's not flopping around and uh, being annoying. And that's what the back of the pocket looks like. And I'm going to fold this up now and put it out of the way as we work on the pocket flap. So there I have my pocket flap and my pocket flap lining and you can see that I have folded up the edges of my lining. I'm just going to use the raw edge of my fashion fabric because it won't fray and I've pressed the curve and I've also cut some reliefs cut so that that lays flat. And I've mitered my corners so that I don't have any raw edges sticking out. And I've made sure I have a right and a left pocket flap. Because you need a right and a left. And now what I'm going to do is pin my pocket bag, or rather my pocket flap, to the lining. To make sure that I've pressed it nicely where it needs to be. Looking good so far. And I'm overlapping on the far edge there a bit, so I'm going to take that back to the iron and press it inside a little bit more. out some of that corner a bit because it's getting a little bulky. Remitering that corner so that all my raw edges are up inside. There, that's going to sit better.
Now, starting a half an inch down from that top edge of the pocket flap, I'm going to fell all the way around the outside edge, securing the lining to the pocket, pocket flap. And I'm going to use my silk thread that's been waxed and pressed. And using my trusty old fell stitch, hiding my knot up inside the flap of the lining. And I'll be back in just a second to show you what I'm talking about. All right, then. My four outside edges have all been felled down. It's kind of hard to see because it's black on black on black. I have trimmed away the top edge of the lining fabric so that I can then miter that corner and press down that top edge of fashion fabric and I've given it a good press and there's my finished pocket flap and now what I can do is then stitch it to the body of my front of my frock coat. because everything is basted in place. It's all nice and smooth. It's not going anywhere. And these can stay in until you're all done the coat. Now, I want to make sure that I'm covering my opening nice and evenly. I'm following this line that I've established with my chalk as where my opening is. And then you can see that the pocket opening is there. It's all contained and covered. And I'm gonna pin this in place through all layers. Being careful not to pin the ironing board. And now with a slip stitch, I'm going to stitch that top edge. And then with a spaced back stitch, I'm going to reinforce that seam about an eighth of an inch down from my folded pocket flap edge. So I'll do that and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, folks, there's my pocket flap stitched in place. Nice little dimple there um, of the spaced back stitch where it's top stitched. I've also trimmed back my seam allowances a little bit. And now all I'm going to do to finish this is baste the pocket flap shut. Again, with a big old diagonal baste, and then it won't move around while I'm finishing the rest of the garment. Again, being careful not to pick up the ironing board. And you can negate sewing yourself to the ironing board if you put a green mat underneath it or sew on a table or whatever. And I'm not knotting my basting stitches. I'm just adding a little back stitch there and leaving a tail. So that's the beginning of the frock coat. One pocket installed. I'm going to go and complete the other pocket on the other side. 
making sure that they are balanced and even and perfectly symmetrical. And then I'll get back to the next step in coat construction. Okay, so I've positioned my body up with the two center fronts of the coat and I've eyeballed where I think the pocket flap should be evenly. And what I'm going to do now is using my body as a measuring tool, I've put my elbows next to my ribs and I'm feeling that these two notches are equal distance from my body and my arms are angled properly so that I know that this line is as straight as I can possibly make it. And now what I'm going to do is make sure that this pocket flap and this pocket flap are even on either side of the body. So I know that this line here matches this line here. And I'm about a fingertip away. And I'm pinning through all of the layers except for the ironing board. Now I'm going to go down here and line these two up. Pin through all of the layers except for the ironing board. And now I'm going to pop a curve in here just ever so slightly so that it follows the curve of Tommy's body and then those two pocket flaps are even. I'm going to slip stitch along the top edge and then a little bit in from that top edge I'm going to do a spaced back stitch along the back. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like these videos. Hit the dingly bell if you want a notification when the next one goes live. And leave me a comment and a like uh, if you want to see more of these. What do you want to see? I can make videos and teach you all of the tricks of my trade on YouTube. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.